So here's some help with the experiment 10 pre-land. The first question says compare and contrast the terms primary standard and secondary standard. So a standard is something that you compare other things to. It's a reference. A primary standard is the original thing that you compare things to. You can make copies of a primary standard, but ultimately everything is being compared to that original reference. So, as an example to clarify this, let's think about the kilogram. Ultimately, the kilogram, every time you weigh something in grams, or as a kilogram, it's comparing it to a piece of metal that's underneath two vacuum-sealed glass bell jars in a vault at the bottom of a basement of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures outside of Paris. So you can see that building at the bottom right here. And you can see a picture of the original primary standard of the kilogram underneath those two belt jars. Now it's not a completely random weight. They were trying to recreate the weight of about uh, one liter of water at four degrees Celsius. Um, but ultimately every kilogram is a comparison to that exact piece of metal and that's why they try to preserve it so much by keeping it under vacuum under those two bell jars. Compare that with a sort of kilogram you could buy on Amazon or at any store uh, those are getting knocked around and being chipped off all the time, and so those aren't as accurate uh, the, as the original kilogram. But they're copies, and they let you do useful work. So those copies would be secondary standards. So secondary standards are copies of primary standard uh, that you can use uh, more regularly. Question two says, calculate the mass of oxalic acid dihydrate needed to prepare 500 milliliters of 0.25 molar oxalic acid solution. In the bottom left, you have solid ox oxalic acid. You can see what that looks like. And in the bottom right, you see what a solution of oxalic acid looks like. Oxalic acid is toxic, and it's in the roots of rhubarb. So whenever you read a chemistry question, the, first, the two things you first want to find one or identify as one, what are they asking for? So here they're asking you to calculate the mass of oxalic acid dihydrate. So I'm going to write that down. That's, we're looking for grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. That's the unit for mass. And then the other thing you want to identify is what are they giving you? And those are usually in numbers. So here they give us 500 milliliters and 0.25 molar solution. So I'll write those two down. Now, once you have those written down, if you can't make connections between them, then look at the units and see if you can break any units down into simpler units. So for example, here, that capital M, molarity, that is actually moles of solute over liter of solution. So I could break that down, I could rewrite that as 0.25 moles of oxalic acid dihydrate over one liter. And when I do that, I see that there are connections between the, uh, the pieces of information that I have. So for example, I have 500 milliliters. I can connect that with the liters in that. So I can get from milliliters to liters. I can use the molarity as a conversion factor to get from, moles, from liters to moles. And then once I have moles, I can get from moles to grams using the molecular mass from the periodic table. All right, so that's my game plan. Now, each of those arrows represents a conversion, and for every conversion, you need a conversion factor. And so for milliliters and liters, that's 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. That's the relationship between those two units. For liters and moles, I can use the molarity. Because of the molarity, I know that for every one liter, I have 0.25 moles of oxalic acid dihydrate. And then to go from moles to grams, you would just add up the molecular mass. So for example, if you look on the periodic table, underneath the C in carbon is 12. So that's how much one carbon would weigh. We have two carbons, so that's 12 times two is 24. You do that for each element here. If you add them all up, you get 100, or I got 126 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate in every one mole of oxalic acid dihydrate. So those are my conversion factors, and now that I have those, I'm going to take the simple number they gave me, the number whose units I couldn't break down, that's 500 milliliters, 
Every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign, a fraction bar, and the units you have on top go on the bottom of the fraction bar, so that they'll cancel out. So here that's milliliters. Now I'm going to fill this fraction in with my conversion factor. So next to milliliters goes the same number as next, the number next to milliliters in the conversion factor, that's a thousand. Going over the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign, so on top I'm going to have one liter. Milliliters cancel out and I'm left with liters, but I want grams, so I'm going to do a, another conversion. Every time you do a conversion, you do a multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on top, go on the bottom so that they cancel out. Here that's liters. The number next to liters is going to be the number next to liters in our second conversion factor. That's a 1. Going acro across the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign, and so on top I'm going to write 0 0.25 moles of oxalic acid. Liters cancels out, and I'm left with moles of oxalic acid dihydrate. But I want grams. So, I have to do another conversion. Every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign and a fraction bar, and the units on top go on the bottom so that they'll cancel out. And I'm going to fill this in with my third conversion factor, so the unit next to moles of oxalic acid dihydrate is going to be 1. Going over the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign, so on top I'm going to write 126 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. Moles of oxalic acid dihydrate cancel, and I'm left with grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. And if you multiply all this out, so it'd be 500 divided by 1,000, hit enter on your calculator, times 0.25, hit enter on your calculator, times 126, hit enter on your calculator, you should get 15.75 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. Question 3 says, during a titration, a student used 31.92 milliliters of a sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize 30 milliliters of 0.2488 molar oxalic acid solution. And they say, nota bene, uh, or note well, that oxalic acid is diprotic. That means it's going to give away two H's. Remember that an H is just, it's just a hydrogen, just has one proton with one electron around it. And so if you take that electron away to have H+, plus, it's just a proton. So people often refer to, to acids as protic because they have H's to give away, or protons to give away. If you only have one H to give away, as in HCl, then it's monoprotic. If you have two H's to give away, as in H2SO4, it's called diprotic. So oxalic acid is going to be diprotic. This is, these are pictures of um, of solid oxalic acid. All right, so the first part of the question says to write the balanced equation for the neutralization reaction. The formula of oxalic acid is H2C2O4. And so you see those two H's, that's why they're talking about it being diprotic. It's going to give both of those away. So a neutralization reaction is always, the general form is always an acid plus a base gives you a salt plus water. And remember that a salt is any ionic compound. So that's a metal and a non-metal. Well, our acid is oxalic acid, H2C2O4. Our base is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. To get the salt, you take the cation from the base. So that's sodium here. And I know that has a plus one charge because it's in column 1A on the periodic table. And you take the anion from the acid. So here, that is um, oxalate. And if you look up on a table of polyatomic ions, you would see that oxalate has a charge of negative 2. Now because those charges are not the same, I'm going to crisscross them. The superscript on one is going to become the subscript on the other, and that'll give me Na2C2O4. And just by writing C2O4, I know that I have one of them, so I don't have to write that orange one down there. So my salt is Na2C2O4, and then water is going to be H2O. So that would be, the that's the equation, but it's not balanced, so I'm going to balance this. Now I like to balance it starting with the salt, um, because there are lots of H's and O's everywhere. So here I have one sodium on the left, two sodiums on the right, so I need to put a 2 in front of that sodium hydroxide. And then to balance the hydrogens, on the left I have four, two coming from the acid, two coming from the base. On the right I only have two, so if I put a two in front of water, 
that we balance the hydrogens and I can check to make sure everything is balanced now. Four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right, four plus four oxygens coming from oxalate plus two coming from sodium hydroxide, that's six oxygens on the left, four coming from oxalate, two coming from water, that's six on the right, so oxygen is balanced. And then two sodiums and two sodiums. And so sodium is balanced, so that's the balanced equation for the neutralization reaction between oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide. Part B asks, how many moles of oxalic acid were present in the sample? Okay, so they give us that we have 30 milliliters of oxalic acid and that the concentration is 0 0.2488 molar oxalic acid solution. And remember, molarity is, zero, is moles per liter. So here, I can break those complicated units down into 0 0.2488 moles of oxalic acid over one liter. And now I can see how the units connect. Milliliters is going to connect with liters. So I can go from milliliters to liters. And then I can use the molarity itself to get from liters to moles of oxalic acid. So now I just need the conversion factors for each of those arrows. I know that there's a thousand milliliters in every one liter. And from the molarity, I know that there, for every one liter, there's going to be 0 0.2488 moles of oxalic acid. Okay, so I take the simple number they give me, the number whose units I cannot break down into simpler units, and I'm going to do a conversion. So I do a cross bar, units on the top go on the bottom so they cancel out, and I fill that in with my first conversion factor. And 1,000 goes next to milliliters, going over the fraction bars, like going across the equal sign, so one liter goes on top. Milliliters cancels, I'm left with liters, but I want moles, so I have to do another conversion. Every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on the top go on the bottom so that they'll cancel out, and I'm going to fill this in with my second conversion factor. So, next to liters goes a 1, going over the fraction bars, like going across the equal sign, so on top it's going to be 0 0.2488 moles of oxalic acid. Liters are going to cancel, and I will be left with moles of oxalic acid. So you'd take 30 divided by 1,000, hit enter on your calculator, times 0.2488, hit enter. You should get 0 0.007464 moles of oxalic acid in the sample. Part C says, how many moles of sodium hydroxide were needed to neutralize the oxalic acid? Okay, well, let's think about what we know. From part A, we have the balanced equation, so we can relate moles of oxalic acid to moles of sodium hydroxide. And from part B, we have the moles of oxalic acid. So I can take that moles of oxalic acid and convert it to moles of sodium hydroxide. Every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on the top go on the bottom so that they cancel out. And I'm going to take the number from the coefficient in the balanced equation. I know that for every one mole of oxalic acid, I'm going to have two moles of sodium hydroxide. Moles of oxalic acid cancel, and in this case I'd be left with 0 0.0149 moles of sodium hydroxide. I'm just taking 0 0.007464 and multiplying it by 2 and hitting enter. D says, what is the molar concentration of the sodium hydroxide? Remember that molar concentration is moles of solute over liters of solution. So we just need moles of sodium hydroxide in liters of solution, and we'll be done. We have moles of sodium hydroxide in part C. We just figured that out. It's 0 0.0149 moles of sodium hydroxide. They also give us in the problem that we have 31.92 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Now, molarity is moles per liter, so I have to convert those milliliters to liters. You just do crossbar, units on the top go on the bottom. In this case, it's milliliters. We've done this several times in this video. You know, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So fill those numbers in. And here you'd just be taking 31.92 dividing by a thousand. You'd get 0 0.03192 liters. So plugging that into the formula for molarity, which is moles of solute on top over liters of solution on the bottom, you'd get 0 0.4668 molar. In, for this particular example. So, and just a note on pronunciation, that capital M, the unit itself is called molarity. 
but when you read it next to a number, you say molar. So 0.4668 molar. But that's describing its molarity.